Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to day 17 of Shamori's lockdown series. Uh, not everything in the bush is well known like lions and leopards and nice and cute and furry like little bunny rabbits. Uh, some of the stuff can be a little bit creepy crawly. Some of the stuff you have to look for, some of the stuff finds you, but it's all pretty interesting. Enjoy. One of Africa's most well-known and dangerous snakes. And this is a, a puff adder. Very, very slow-moving, sluggish, well-camouflaged snake. Because it's such a thick-bodied, heavy snake, it normally moves in this fashion. We call it caterpillar movement, moving in a straight line. That's quite an easy way to identify its tracks. There's something fantastic to see. There's an egg case from a palasty spider, um, one of the species of rain spiders that we get in South Africa. They are very, very large. The female makes up that egg casing by cutting and putting together leaves and silk and making that very well protected, quite big ball uh, that you can see over there uh, that she'll lay the eggs in and it'll be a safe place for the eggs to reach a hatching stage where they'll then hatch out. The little spiderlings, which will then go through uh, an ectice, and you can see there's all the shed skins from the little rain spiders. After they grew and developed, they then would have ecticed, uh, molted their, their exoskeleton in order to uh, be able to grow and, uh, and then they would have dispersed from there. It's a very, very large spider that we get in South Africa. Uh, some of them, uh, they'll get as big as your hand. If you have a look at the ground over here that's cracked because of the high clay content as it's dried up, you have all these irregular shapes, um, you know, almost like block shapes. Anytime in nature when you see something perfectly round or anything like that, you know it's out of place. What I want to show you is if you have a look carefully, is there's all of these geometric shapes in the ground over here, but there is one round circular shape. And if we lift that lid, there we can see a perfectly fitted trapdoor from a trapdoor spider. These spiders live underground and they have these perfectly fitted plugs over their burrows. Those spiders then wait underneath those trapdoors that are lined with silk and they have radiating silk strands out of these burrows and any vibrations that they pick up of insects, the spider then launches out and catches their prey. Another common creepy crawly that we have in the bush is scorpions. And here you can see there's a keyhole shaped burrow, uh, basically the same shape as their body. And we can see it's active and fresh because of all this fresh digging outside the entrance of the burrow as the scorpion has been digging the burrow to enlarge it. Another way to tell if a scorpion burrow is active is to look for the circular exoskeleton rings left behind from millipedes that the scorpion has been feeding on. Once they finish feeding on them, they discard them out the entrance of the burrow. So like any arthropod, and a scorpion included, they don't have an internal skeleton that allows them to grow. Their outside skin is their skeleton and needs to periodically be shed in order for them to be able to grow. And check out this cool little casting. Just sticking out from one of these little rocks is a very venomous little scorpion indeed. Thick tail, thin pincers. I definitely think this guy is out of the weight class for creepy crawlies, uh, but I still think he makes it into the category. This is a, a water monitor or a Nile monitor. It's one of Africa's largest lizard species. They are formidable predators. These guys love hanging around uh, our waterways and riverline areas. They are quite formidable predators. Uh, they preferably go for chicks, nestlings, birds eggs, tortoise eggs, uh, even rodents, anything they can overpower. Uh, you'll see it's it's got a very, very long tongue that is busy flicking in and out, basically like a snake's tongue, and it'll be using that tongue to pick up scent particles within the air, figure out if there's predators around, figure out if there's food around, and figure out if I'm a threat. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big, big animal, two meters in length. They can move really fast when they run for short bursts, and uh, that tail, formidable weapon, very, very strong. They can use it as a whip and those claws as well. If you, uh, if you get on the wrong side of this guy, he'll, he'll really hurt you. Uh, 
they're not hairy, they're not scary. But the last little guy is a little leopard tortoise. How cute is this little guy? Uh, one of three tortoise species that we get on Shimori Game Reserve. We get the leopard tortoise, the parrot beak tortoise, and the angulate tortoise. This guy is a little bit smaller than a football. And they can live for very, very long time. Some of them well over 100.